So we will define a subspace here. We will, oh, let's go to a, let's go to a black ink here. Okay. We will let V be a vector space. and W a subset. So we haven't said anything about a subspace yet. A subset um, specify one quality of that subset. It's very important. It might seem obvious, but we do have to specify it. And W a non-empty. non-empty subset of V. Okay, if W is a vector space, with respect to the same operations, as V, then W is a subspace of V. So in other words, if I'm given a particular vector space, and if I take a particular subset of that vector space, if the W, if that subset itself is a vector space in its own right with respect to those two operations, then I can say that W is an actual subspace of that vector space. And again, subset, that goes without saying, but a subset isn't necessarily a subspace. A subspace has very, very specific properties. So um, we'll start off with the first basic example, the trivial example, which it's probably not even worth mentioning, but it's okay. Zero, it's a vector and V. So the zero vector itself, that element alone, is a subspace. It is not empty and it actually satisfies the property because zero plus zero is zero, C times zero is zero, so the closure properties are satisfied and in fact all of the other properties are satisfied, and V itself. Um, a set is a subset of itself. And again, we call these the trivial examples. They don't come up too often, but we do need to mention them to be complete. Okay. The second example, let's do example two. Okay, we'll let V equal R3. So now we're talking about three space. And W be the subset all vectors of the form A, B, zero. In other words, um, I'm dealing with all three vectors and I'm gonna take as a subset of that everything where the Z, um, where the Z component is zero. So in other words, I'm just looking at the X, Y plane, if you will. So there's no Z value. So that is clearly a subset. Obviously this is just, you know, uh, the Z component is zero. So it's clearly a subset. Now let's check to see if it's actually a subspace. Okay, so with respect to the addition, well, let's see. We'll let A1 equal A1, B1, 0. We'll let A2 equal A2, B2, 0. A1 plus A2 equals A1 plus A2, B1 plus B2, zero. Well, yes, that's a number, that's a number, that's a number. This is a three vector. It does belong to W. So the closure is satisfied. Now notice, um, when we say closure with respect to this subset, that means if I start with something in that subset, I need to end up in that subset. 
I can't just, if this is the bigger set and if I take a little subset of it, when I'm checking closure now, I'm checking to see that it stays in here, not just that it stays here. If I take two elements, let's say AB0 and another AB0, and if I add them and I end up outside of that set, that's, that can't be so. I might still end up in the, in, you know, in the overall vector space, but the idea is I'm talking about a subset. I want closure with just respect to that subset. So be very, very clear about that. Be very careful with that. Now let's check uh, scalar multiplication. C times A equals C times a, B, 0, well, it's equal to C, A, C, B, 0. Sure enough, that's a number, that's a number. The third element is still 0, so that's also in W. So, yes, uh, we can certainly verify all of the other properties. It's not a problem. As it turns out, this is a subspace. So, W is a subspace of V. Uh, as it turns out, this gives rise to a really, really nice theorem, which allows us to actually not have to check all of the other properties, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. We only have to check two, closure. And since most of the time we're not talking about the entire space anyway, we're only talking about a part of it, um, the subspace, a subset of a given space that we're working with, this theorem that we're about to list is, comes in very, very handy.